Today I wanted to talk about um, trading card games and living card games, how those two models compare, and how they relate to gem blenders. I thought I'd start this video by going over some definitions so we're all on the same page of what those terms mean. So a trading card game is also known as a collectible card game and is abbreviated as a TCG or CCG. It's a deck building strategy card game in which new sets of cards are added to the game over time. It's distributed using a blind purchase model with booster packs and the cards have different rarity. It's financially less accessible because you have to buy lots of booster packs in order to get the card you want. Because of this, there's a thriving secondary market. On the other hand, a living card game is a term coined by Fantasy Flight Games and is a variant of a trading card game. It uses a fixed purchase model in which contents of the packs contain specific cards. They do not have rarity and the game is more financially accessible because you know exactly which cards you're receiving. Uh, since I began designing Gem Blenders, my original intention was always to make it a traditional TCG that uses booster packs. However, I had only ever played the, the core three trading card games, which are Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Over the past six months or so, I've been learning a lot about the card game world and also quotes and pricing. And it turns out the traditional trading card games are very expensive to print. This has to do a lot with booster packs, card sorting, card rarities. All this comes together as a very uh, costly and complex process. This is the opposite of what I want as a Kickstarter creator. I want to keep my prices as low as possible um, so I can grow the community and make the game as accessible as possible. Uh, this is especially important because Gem Blenders is an original IP and has a very low following. So all of these factors uh, have led me to decide that an LCG style model would be the best for Gem Blenders. Uh, it'll be cheaper for me to print, it'll be cheaper for potential backers to back, and also you would get the full set of cards, uh, giving a more full experience from day one of owning the game. I hate to say goodbye to booster packs. Uh, growing up, they were one of my favorite parts of uh, trading card games. But what I liked even more than booster packs was uh, the strategy behind the games. Building my own decks, customizing them, and trying to come up with really exciting strategies. And you'll definitely get that uh, in Gem Blenders. That's not to say that there would never be booster packs in the future for Gem Blenders, but what I want to focus on right now is this first base set and getting it on Kickstarter. And then I'd be able to have a really nice conversation with the community and decide what the best next steps for Gem Blenders would be. This initial set of Gem Blenders consists of 200 cards. There are 100 blends, 50 heroes, 41 action cards, and 9 gems. These cards will be packaged in two sets. The starter set will contain two starter decks, a gem pack consisting of 5 or 6 of every gem type, and then an additional set of high use cards so you can edit the starter decks. The second would be a collector set, which would contain the complete base set of cards containing one copy of every high level blend and multi start action, and two copies of every lower level blend and single start action, as well as another gem pack. You would be able to get multiple copies of the collector set to decide how serious you want to get into deck building. So that's my plan for Gem Blender's distribution in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any thoughts, concerns, comments, please leave them below. Uh, that's all I have for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon.